So let's have a look at this. We can see where we've got to go. We can see where we've got to go. And um, before we actually get started on the algebra or calculus, I want us to think as much as possible about what this can tell us right now before we even put pen to paper. Just by looking at it, can we interpret anything useful about this? So let's just have a look at this part first. What can you tell me about that, about the motion, just based on that statement? Okay, number one, you know, apart from the fact that the heading tells you, number one, you know, that's in the form, x double dot equals, in fact, let's write it underneath. x double dot equals negative n squared x, right? So this is a simple harmonic, this matches simple harmonic motion, right? Can you tell me some more things? What else can you squeeze out of that equation? Yeah. The period of the equation that the displacement equation of Yep. Okay, so we're looking at this n squared here, right? We see that n must be 3, right? Now, I just want to point out, I just want to point out, normally, if I didn't have, if I didn't have, um, well, if that n value was just 1, okay, um, what kind of tree functions, like, how, what's the period of a normal tree function, sine and cosine, it's going to be 2 pi. Right now, because I'm actually putting an n equals three out the front, so this could have been like a sine three t plus alpha or a cos three t plus alpha. Okay, that means the period is no longer two pi. The period is going to be two pi and three. I get three copies of the the whole graph. It wiggles up and down three times within that normal, not to two pi. Okay, that's cool. I know the period. Do I know any? Is there anything else I can squeeze out of this equation? It's um, about the origin. Fantastic. Very good. You can see. Because here there's no x take away whatever, okay? The center of motion must be the origin, okay? So it's about x equals zero. I'm going to write that down. There's the center of motion. Fantastic. Okay, I think we've squeezed a lot out of that very, what? What is that? One, two, three, four, or five if you count the equal sign. Symbols, okay? I mean, this is something that mathematicians love to do. Condense as much meaning as we can into a very, very small space. Can we move on to this next bit? What can you tell me, again, without putting pen to paper, what can you interpret off of this? Anyone suggest something? When the particle is at rest, it is five. So amplitude is five. Ah, okay. So you said a couple of things there. Okay, the first thing is, when I see Something like, say, t equals zero. I think, oh, initially, or, or vice versa. I see initially, and I think t equals zero. When I see v equals zero, at rest is exactly what I should think. Or alternatively, if I see the words at rest, I should think v equals zero. Okay? Um, where is it at rest? It's at rest at x equals five. Now, for simple harmonic motion, let's just draw a really quick and dirty graph for ourselves here, right? If I draw a very small thing here, um, I don't know anything about time, so I don't know where this starts. I don't know if it starts at the origin. I don't know if it starts at extremity or somewhere in between. So I'm just going to imagine, suppose it does that. Like, that's just a simple one. I know I can draw it on this axis because, as Brendan pointed out, the center of motion is the origin, and there's the x-axis, and there's zero. Okay. So what we're saying is, where are these points where v is equal to zero? At x equals 5, it's going to be that point, right? That point? That's a stationary point. It's at rest. So the next thing that Raph said, which is actually a next, another step of logic, is, oh, if that's where it's at rest, that's important to me because that's the amplitude, right? That's the amplitude, which means that the other place I'm at rest, which I can conclude from this, is x equals negative 5. It's, it's all the way on the opposite end, OK? So, without actually doing any calculations or differentiating or integrating or whatever, I already know a whole lot about this, um, about this motion, okay? And I want you to get in the habit of thinking before writing. Think before writing, because that guides the writing that you will then do, okay? It gives you the most efficient part. Now that I've got um, all of this background, now I can have a go at this question. It says, find v squared as a function of x, okay? You know a whole lot of equations about simple harmonic motion. Now, if this is where I'm going, what do you think is the best starting point? Mm. Yeah. Just the d on dx. Mm. D on dx. D on dx. Suggestion was d on dx of half v squared. Okay, pause for a second. Why is this the obvious choice? There are two reasons. 
Okay, firstly, uh, this is in terms of displacement, right? It's in, in terms of displacement. So you can't use V, dV on dx. You're kind of going to be stuck without a paddle. There's another really obvious thing, which is I want V squared. And this is the form that has a V squared in it. Obviously, I'm going to have to muck about with it a little bit, but not a huge amount. So this is the, the obvious choice. <coughs> so this is acceleration, which I've been given in the question as minus or negative 9x. Okay? All right. So based on how I've been given information about the motion and where I'm trying to go, I decide this is my best starting point. Okay? What would you like me to do now? Okay, let's integrate with respect to x. I'm going to encourage you as much as possible when you're describing what you're doing to a friend or to yourself. Now we know you integrate with respect to a variety of things. So don't just say integrate. Tell me what you're integrating with respect to. And it's x in this case. On the left-hand side, you're going to get half v squared. Over on the right, what would you like me to write? Minus, minus 9x squared <coughs> on 2. Uh, as has been my convention, I'm just going to say half c, so that I end up with just a c once I double. Okay, So I'm going to say, yeah, that guy is constant. It's a real number. And now I'm just going to multiply through. That gives me this. What do you think? <coughs> that look right. Okay, now I'm, I'm most of the way there. Uh, I need v squared as a function of x. I sort of want to get rid of this constant, don't I? How will I do that? Yeah, good. Are you starting to get the sense you're always going to get a constant when you integrate and you're always going to use some conditions in order to work out what that constant is? So, let's keep going. When x equals 5, v equals 0. Or well, I have to say at. So I'm just going to substitute in. What are we going to get here? Uh, negative 9 times 25 is 0 squared. Uh, 9 times 25, that's, that's one short of 10 times 25. So it's 250, we're going to take one away. So that's going to be 225, and I can sub that back in. So I've got this. I notice C is positive, and um, I've got a minus 9x squared there. So I'm going to write C out the front. 225. Minus 90 squared. What do you think? Is it going okay? Okay, now, um, I'm going to do one more thing here. Like, I'm finished, I'm done. But mathematicians, we're always looking for patterns. And when we see patterns, we always think, hmm, why is that? So you can see here, there's an obvious factorization I can do here, right? Or not an ob obvious, it's a very simple one. Because this 225 came from 9 times whatever, I can obviously take a factor of 9 out of it. Yes, do you agree with that? So I'm going to write 9 at the front. Which gives me 25 take away x squared. Yeah? So far, so good. Hmm. Now I'm done. I'm just going to pause there.